Welcome to AG's Ace. David Warner's sacking uh, by Sunrisers Hyderabad has raised a lot of questions. One of the main question is that why does the captain have to be the sole fall guy in a team of 11 players? And when we talk about it as a team sport, we also know that the coach and the team management, all of them are very, very involved in the team selection, more so in the IPL. So why is it that David Warner got the sack pretty unceremoniously? Also, he was dropped uh, in the next game that SRH played. He was also replaced by Kane Williamson. So let's let's take a look at uh, what has been going on. So Warner had been leading SRH since 2015, and he was one of the captains who was very impressive in the IPL. This time, he did have a below par performance in just one season, and it has cost him his place. Uh, Kane Williamson has come in. The Kiwi led SRH in 2018 and 2019 before being replaced by David Warner. So I, my team has dug up a, a couple of very interesting stats, which I want to share with you, which gives a perspective on what has been ha happening in the IPL where captains are concerned over a period of time since its inception. So. In 2008, VVS Lakshman had to make way for Adam Gilchrist, the Deccan Chargers icon player in their inaugural season, dropped himself after his team endured a poor start. However, uh, Gilchrist did not uh, change their fortune as the team went on to finish at the bottom of the table. So that immediate change midway didn't have an impact. Of course, Gilly uh, got his revenge because the, in the next IPL, they won the title under him. 2008. Uh, Sachin Tendulkar had to go out owing to a groin injury and uh, that gave Harbhajan Singh an opportunity to lead the Mumbai Indians. Um, but in his third game in charge, he was involved in a messy slap gate incident with Sri Sant of Kings XI Punjab and that led to his suspension. So MI had to choose their third skipper of the season and the responsibility fell on Sean Pollock. 2009, Anil Kumble replaced Kevin Peterson. More of a force change than anything else as Kumble was appointed captain after KP had to leave midway owing to international commitments. Kumble then led RCB to their first final, which they lost to Deccan Chargers. Then 2012, Kohli gets the first taste of IPL captaincy. Uh, he was handed over the reins in 2012 when the management decided to strip Daniel Vettori of the captaincy owing to his poor form. Murli Dharan replaced Vettori as the lead spinner and Kohli took over the captain's role, registering six wins in eight matches that he led, narrowly missing out on a playoff spot. But since then, till now, uh, RCB are yet to win the title even once. 2012 again, Sangakara drops himself. In their last season, Deccan Chargers once again found themselves in the middle of a slump and the skipper, similar to Lakshman in 2008, took the decision to rest himself. Cameron White took over. However, with little success as DC bowed out of the IPL with a ninth place finish. 2013, when Ricky Bonting stepped down as captain of the Mumbai Indians midway, no one expected the kind of turnaround that Rohit Sharma would inspire. Rohit took over after just six games and went on to oversee eight wins in the last 10 league games. They lost in the qualifier one to CSK but fought back and claimed their first title, beating CSK in the final. Rohit Sharma went on to lead MI to a Champions League title as well. And we all know what a fantastic captain he is in the limited overs format. 2014, Sami takes over from Shikhar Dhawan. Shikhar Dhawan, after scoring 215 runs in 10 matches, was dropped as captain again by the Sunrisers Hyderabad management and was replaced by then West Indies captain Darren Sami. The decision inspired better performance from SRH, but they eventually finished sixth, 2015. Steve Smith replaces Shane Watson. And this was a surprising decision which came from the Rajasthan Royals when suddenly at the toss, Shane Watson does not show up. Instead, Steve Smith comes in and we are told that Watson had quietly stepped aside and uh, he will take over the charge. RR had a revival late in the league but finished fifth in one of the most incredible matches that saw MI rob RR of a playoff spot chasing 189 in 14 overs. Okay, then 2016, Murli Vijay is in, Miller out, no change in the result. David Miller was retained by Kings XI Punjab and was made the captain despite having no prior experience of leading a team. And Miller oversaw five losses in the first six games. He could only muster 76 runs from six innings. Murli Vijay took over, but the fortunes remained unturned as Vijay endured six losses in the next nine games. So nothing really happened. This is an interesting story with Gautam Gambhir in 2018. Uh, then DC was known as Delhi Daredevils and their poor performance in the first half of the IPL in 2018 saw Gambhir 
bench himself and he handed over the charge to Shreya Sayyar. As per reports, he also didn't, uh, decided against taking his salary of 2.8 crores. Surprisingly, he was benched for the rest of the season despite being available and he retired from professional cricket later that year. But that's a typical uh, Gautam Gambhir style where he, he didn't even take the money. Dinesh Karthik, wicketkeeper, batsman Dinesh Karthik in 2020 was, stepped down as captain of KKR and uh, he was having a pretty patchy time. Uh, Warner, uh, sorry, Oin Morgan took over, but nothing much changed. And uh, this, this sacking came in for quite a bit of criticism because uh, there was a talk that midway through the tournament, what is the point in changing uh, the captain? But it happened. Okay, now coming back to Warner. Um, I have a quote from Tom Moody, director of the Cricket Sunrises Hyderabad, and he said, we had to make the hard call. Somebody has to miss out. And unfortunately, it's him. He's shocked and disappointed. Anyone would be disappointed. He has come to terms with the logic behind what we want to achieve from a franchise's perspective. He has rallied around the team and more importantly, the team has rallied around him. Okay, now the head coach Trevor Bayless says it's a difficult decision, a big decision. We wanted to try and change the makeup of the team and try to help out bowlers with a few extra overs from another bowler. We are playing Nabi in this game and somewhere Jason Holder in that middle order will help our pace bowling as well. Of course, uh, David Warner was sporting enough to play the 12th man and he was appreciated for that. Ajay Jadeja came in with a different perspective and I always admire his perspective having known him closely over a period of time. That it was evident that SRH is being controlled by someone from the outside, coach, management, uh, whoever, and Warner was not in full control. In fact, Warner himself said the final 11 is not done by him. So he does not have a complete say in it. Interesting. Where I'm concerned, I feel that cricket has gone the way of football, where the team owners lose patience quickly and often sack the coach. Here in cricket, it is the captain. But is that going to be enough? Often teams in the IPL are chosen outside the call of the captain, yet he is the fall guy. Records show that mostly switching captains midway through a tournament has not helped the team or in the results. I believe David Warner was treated a bit unfairly. Maybe his slow uh, knock added to it when he sort of plodded on and it didn't help the cause. His, his side lost. He, of course, made a couple of remarks, but admitting his failure, but possibly that was the last nail. Um, so whether it is a Jose Mourinho, known as the special one in his Chelsea days, then later being sacked by Manchester United and then by the Spurs, or Warner in the IPL, it seems everything has a shelf life, more so the heat when you are on the top. Thanks for watching AGZ.